Good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are joining me for the very first time, my name is Dahlia, and I have been sharing the wonderful, wonderful Word of God on this channel. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Again, thank you for joining me. It is Prayer Time Friday, and I have to jump into this wonderful, wonderful Word. The title and the series that it just turned out to be a series God hates you, question mark, question mark. That's a question that you have to answer. You have to go back and study it for yourself and come to your own conclusions by the word of God. But it's a wonderful study. I hope it um, inspire you to go and read it and study out. All I'm doing is giving you the word, giving you the little, the footprint, the map, you know, giving you like a little map. And then you go back and you study the word and come to your conclusion by the spirit of the Lord. So I want to jump right into this wonderful word because I am excited. I am so excited about this word. So you know how I feel about prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer should be a part of your life. And remember when you pray, don't just say what you have to say and then leave. Remember Study the word, meditate on the word during your prayer time and pause and listen to what the Lord has to say. Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. So you have to make sure that you listen to the voice of the Lord. He speaks. And when you listen, I'm telling you, you won't need anybody prophesying to you because you will get the news. The headlines will come to you first. Amen. So let's get into it because there's lots to share. We're talking about Proverbs chapter six, where Solomon was pointing out some things that God hates. And if you didn't see the first series, one, two, three, four, please go back and watch it because the foundation is laid as to the, the you know, the interpretation of what he meant when he said, it's an abomination to God. These things are an abomination to God. And I broke down the word abomination for you. So I need you to go back if you didn't watch it to get that because it's too much time and I have lots to share here today. Um, from the lesson, we talked about the last lesson, Isaiah chapter 59. And in, in Isaiah 59, we're talking about the members. He refers to the body as members. Uh, Paul refers to the body, body as members. And Jesus said, we are the body of Christ. So we are members of his body. Remember, Jesus is the head of the body, not a man. Not no pastor, not the narcissistic pastor. You know, they cling to their little pulpits. But God is the head of the church and the church is his body. And so I said to you, the body is important and he uses the body. He speaks metaphorically. And so even though he speaks metaphorically, he wants us to be mindful. Because remember, your hand can't say to your fingers, I don't need your fingers. I don't need to use my fingers. Your hand needs your fingers, right? And you cannot use your fingers or any part of your body to sin against God. So we're going to get into the word. Now, I wanted to talk about iniquity because when we were in Isaiah, it talks about he talks about your iniquity separates you from God. In the last lesson, I said, when uh, we went to Matthew, we said Matthew talked about the things that we do out of our heart. He says, in your heart, from your heart comes these thoughts, thoughts of adultery, thoughts of fornication, covetousness, idolatry, blasphemy. All these thoughts come from your heart. But then he says this because Jesus was speaking. Then he says this, these are the things that defiles you. Hmm. So these are the things that make you dirty. These are the things that contaminates you. So I want you to think about that. And so when we went to Isaiah and Isaiah put it all together, he gave a great summation. He said, your iniquity have separated you. God is not deaf that he can't answer your prayer. That's how Isaiah started. He says, hold on. His hands are not too short that he can't reach down and deliver you. His ears are not too, you know, heavy or deaf that he cannot hear you. 
And then Isaiah explained, he says, it's your iniquity that has come between you and your God. And he's not going to answer your prayer. And you want to say, well, we're under Christ. All the promises are yes and amen and yes. But you still cannot walk in sin. You still cannot live in sin habitually. And I keep after you, I keep having to use that word habitually because it you cannot dwell in sin. Sin cannot be your lifestyle. In the book of First John, he says, How can you live in darkness and say you're of Christ? You can't, you're a liar. And you have a lot of church goers who are living in darkness, living in sin and are saying, professing Christ, you cannot be in darkness. I don't care who you are or who your pastor is. You cannot be living in darkness and sin and think that God is going to listen to you when the answer is coming. It's from the devil. It's not. Listen to me. Don't be surprised. The devil got some tricks. The Bible says, be careful of the wiles of the devil. The devil comes with his tricks. Remember Moses, I keep telling you guys. Remember when Moses went to Pharaoh and Moses threw the rod down? What did Pharaoh's witchcraft workers and sorcerers do? They threw their rods down. Did it turn into a serpent? Yes, it did. As did Moses. So the devil got some tricks. But you see, Moses' rod, Moses' serpent swallowed up their serpents, but their rods turned into serpents. So the devil have tricks. So don't be fooled by people who are living in sin, walking in darkness, professing, oh, you know, mm -mm. you've got to go by what the word says. So iniquity, Isaiah says, your iniquity separates you from God. And I told you I, at that lesson, I didn't stop to break down iniquity, but I want to break it down because I want you to know what iniquity means and what it is. Because when you understand iniquity, then you'll be careful next time. Mm -hmm. He says, your iniquity has hindered you or has come between you and God and God will not answer your prayer. Now, there's a difference when you ask God for something and it's not the right season and it's not the right time. So don't conflate two different issues. Some things God wants you to wait for. But then when God don't hear your prayers, period, there's a problem. Houston, we've got a problem. So the word iniquity is more deeply rooted. We know sin. We know when you make a mistake and transgression. I'm not going to go into that. I taught a whole lesson on these things. You probably have to go back into the videos uh, in the thing and, and find it where I talked about the difference between transgression, sin, mistake, and so forth. I just wanted to address iniquity because Isaiah used it in Isaiah 59 in the last lesson. So iniquity goes more deeper than transgression and sin and mistake. Iniquity is a premeditated choice. I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. Iniquity is a premeditated choice to commit. Listen. To commit and continue without repentance. Mm, 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 mm. My God. When David sinned against God by taking Uriah's wife and committed adultery with her. And then when she was pregnant, instead of repenting, he had opportunity after opportunity to repent. But he didn't. He went further by killing, committing murder to cover the sin until God called him out. Now, I want you to think about this. David was the apple of God's eye. Mm -hmm. He made him king. I mean, come on. God kicked Saul off the throne and David was king, right? But God did not turn a blind eye on what he did. He killed this man and took his wife. It was premeditated. And so you cannot walk in premeditated sin. It's called iniquity because you have thought it and you continue, you continue with this sin. And when you continue like that, you eventually will become a reprobate. 
and you can look that word up. So let us get into the lesson, God Hates You in Proverbs. I usually start by reading uh, Proverbs. So let me go to it. I have to uh, turn to it, uh, people. Sorry. I have to turn to it because I have it turned in my other Bible. But uh, as I was preparing the lesson, um, a song, the Lord reminded me of a song that we learned when I was in Sunday school as a child. And the song goes something like this. What It says, watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. Watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. Because there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what you see. Then it goes to your lips, watch your lips, watch your lips, what they say. And then it says, watch your ears, watch your ears, what they hear. Watch your hands, watch your hands, what they do. And watch your feet, watch your feet where they go. Because there's a father up above looking down in tender love. Watch your eyes and watch your feet where they go. And then as kids, we would they, they would let you say it all together. So the last part of it will go, watch your eyes and ears and lips and hands and feet. And then we would stomp our feet. Oh, that was the best part of this song. And it says, watch your eyes and ears and lips and hands and feet. And we would go boom, boom. Cause there's a father up above looking down with tender love. So watch your eyes and ears and lips and hands and feet. And that's a song. Maybe you ought to write the words down because this Proverbs is talking about the things we do and the things that God hates. I mean, again, don't come for me. I didn't write it. Go to King James and sort it out with him. If you want to write a negative comment or I don't know, figure it out, go back and read it. And so in Proverbs chapter six, we, I'm going to read it again and then I'll start with the scripture. So six and it's verse, uh, 16. Oh, let me start. Hold on people. I'm getting there. Okay. So it says, <clears throat> these six things does the Lord hate. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. We talked about that. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imag imaginations or plans, feet that are swift running to mischief, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. One who sows discord among the brethren. Now, I wanted to uh, uh, talk about, because there are some things we have to talk about. He says, we're going to address the other two. Hold on, let me go to my starting scripture. I want to go to Matthew chapter 5. Let's see where we are. Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 30. But I want to say this, because I don't want anyone to walk away thinking, oh, God hates whatever. Read the word, what the word says. But God does not want dysfunction. He doesn't want dysfunction in any way in us, in our lives. He abhors, abhors or detests evil action, especially iniquity. And... <laughs> Where I'm from, you have people who say, you iniquity workers. Because sometimes you got some people, they just work iniquity. And what is iniquity? It's a premeditated, unrepentant continuance in, in wrongdoing, in doing evil, in doing wickedness. And so God does not like or support wicked and evil actions. Your heart is the core. Your heart is the core of your soul, spirit, and body. It runs the body. And God is holy and God put his spirit in us. He gave us his spirit. So he expects us to act right, to think right and to think first in the spirit. You see, that's just how it is. And so in Matthew chapter five, let's go there. I, I wasn't going to start there, but I'm going to kind of pivot back to the scripture that I'm going to open with. Matthew five verse 30 says this. This is a big one, okay? I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. This is a big one. Verse uh, 30, it says this. Actually, I'm going to read. I am going to read from verse 29. So share this video with others. I'm telling you, share it so we can minister to them, okay? 
So in verse 28, it says, Jesus is speaking. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever looks, listen good now, whosoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus is talking about sin and he's talking specifically about adultery. So he's talking and addressing sin. Now, in the other books, he says, you've heard in past, it says, don't murder, don't kill. When we were talking about the shedding of innocent blood from the text, right? And he said, you've heard in the past, don't kill. And that was a part of the Ten Commandments, right? So he says, but I say to you, if in your mind you even curse your brother or you're angry with your brother, you already committed murder. So you see, it's not that they did away with the law. The law now comes in our heart and from our heart comes these thoughts. And he says, out of your heart come thoughts of murder, thoughts of adultery, thoughts of fornication, and you got to get your heart right. That's where a lot of church people miss it. They think they can come to church and go through some rituals because that's what we're seeing in the church, rituals. And if you're not friends with the pastor, if you're not kissing up and saying yes, yes to everything they say, then you are on the outs. But you've got to go back to the word of God. He says, if you look at a woman and lost after her, you commit adultery. So that means this person has to be married. So a married man or a married woman, because it works both ways. And so he's addressing this sin issue because it comes from the heart. And he says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. My God, Jesus is speaking. So when people are talking the sweet baby Jesus, he's sweet, all right. Mm -hmm. He's sweet on holy living. But nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to be the fluff and the fold, you see, and the deliverance and the emotional preaching. Sometimes you go to church, all you get is emotional preaching. God's going to give you a new house. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. Meanwhile, the people getting the God's going to do is not doing for God. They're not living holy. He says, if your right eye offends you or causes you to sin, pluck it out, cast it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than your whole body, your whole body, your whole body be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, huh? if your right hand causes you to sin, Jesus is speaking. He said, cut it off, cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body, your whole body to be cast into hell. I mean, people, people, do you want me to go through this? Now, again, he's speaking metaphorically. So don't walk away and says, oh, that preacher woman told me to go cut off my eye and pluck out my eye and cut off my hand. No, he's speaking metaphorically because he's letting us know the drastic measures, the drastic measures we should go through to eradicate and eliminate sin from our lives. And it starts with our hearts. We have got to get our hearts right. David prayed, create in me a clean heart, renew the right spirit in me. And we have to go back to God and ask him to create in us the right spirit and a clean heart. God was not about sexual Im Im immorality. He was not about sin in any way. And he says, if you look at a woman and lost in your mind, he says, you've already done the deed. You've committed adultery. If you think about hurting somebody in your mind, you've already killed them. You committed murder. This is a serious thing. And remember when we read in Matthew, he says, these things defiled you because it comes out of your heart. <laughs> So when Solomon now says in Proverbs 16 that these things are an abomination to God, these things are coming out of your heart. You have got to watch your heart, the thoughts that come out of your heart. He said, for these things, fornication, adultery, murder, 
covetousness, blasphemy, lying, stealing, it all begins in your heart. And you have to get your heart right. So he says, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Cut it off. It's better that the rest of you go to heaven. So if you going to commit adultery, you think it's going to be pleasurable and all this stuff. Why would you go to hell? Send your entire soul and body to hell just for one night? Five minutes? Why? Why would you go and steal? Why would you go and steal? Why do you sit and watch pornography day and night, night and day and go to hell when you can turn off the, the whatever you're watching, turn off the device? When you cannot go to that woman's or man's house? When you can tell your mind, listen, Put your mind on the Lord. The old folks used to say, keep your mind stayed on Jesus, baby, and he'll keep you in perfect, perfect peace. That's the word, you see. And he says, these things God hates. A proud look, right? A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that are swift to mischief. And we talked about what mischief means. He says, a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among the brethren. My friends, we have got to do a heart check. It's a serious, serious thing. But many church members or church folks, they don't want to. They just want to hear the blessings, the blessings, you know, Bless me here and bless me there. But yet nobody wants to live right before God. So the next two he's talking about is a false witness and one who sows discord. Okay. So again, well, let me go to the book of Romans because I want to get this. So don't forget, Mark, I want you to go back and read uh, Matthew, sorry, chapter five, verse um, 30. Go back. He says, if... Your right hand causes you to sin, chop it off. And again, he's speaking metaphorically. It means you have to eradicate sin out of your life. And you might say to me, how do I be clean my heart? How do I become a better person? He's talking about body parts. He's using the body parts as an example, metaphorically, to let you know that you cannot play with sin. Sin has no business in your life. And when you come to Christ, the Bible said sin no longer has dominion over you. So you can't say you're controlled by sin. If you say you're controlled by sin, then you got to go back and check yourself. Are you truly saved? Sin cannot control you and it cannot dominate you. Not that you won't be tempted. You are going to be tempted. We're humans. We're tempted every second of the day. But you have the power. The choice is yours. My pastor, pastor, my former pastor, pastor, Sarah Utterbach and Clinton Utterbach, she used to say, okay, did the cigarette jump up out of your purse, call your name and said, here I am. And did the matches jump up in your hands and says, light me and the two meet? No, you have to put your hand in your purse. Take out that cigarette. You got to get the match and you got to light it and you got to smoke it. Nobody forced you. You have a choice. So when you feel the urge to watch the porn and you feel the urge to smoke that marijuana, you feel the urge to go sleep with somebody's husband or fornicate, you tell yourself it's against the Lord. And I cast down that thought because my body is a temple of the living God. I'm not going to defile it. So bah, and throw out the cigarettes. Don't buy them. Nobody forced you to go to the store to buy liquor. You got to go and buy it on your way. Say, oh, 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 oh. My body is a temple of the living God. I'm not going to defile my body. But you see, we give in to the flesh, the mighty flesh. No, the spirit, the spirit is willing, but you've got to yield to the spirit. So you might say, well, how do I do this? I'm going to read it for you before I get into these uh, two topics here. In Romans 12, 1, this is how you defeat the devil. He says, the apostle speaking, I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God. So he's pleading and he says, by the mercies of God, because God is merciful. 
he says that you present, you present your body a living sacrifice. See, that's the answer right there. So when Proverbs is saying, God hates these things, feet that run to do mischief, a lying tongue, uh, people who cause discord, a proud look, you've got to present your body as a living sacrifice. Tell your body no, tell your mind no, tell your heart, shut up, I'm going to get to the word. But you've got to get the word in your soul, in your heart. Remember what I said, David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against the Lord. And so he says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Present your body holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewing, the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You've got to renew your mind on the word. You've got to renew your mind through prayer. And when you pray and you study the word, when these thoughts come to you, you rebuke the thoughts out of your spirit. You bind the thoughts, you cast it out. He says, present your body. So when your body's going through, it's a sacrifice. Oh, yes, my friend. It's a sacrifice to live holy because you can't have that liquor. You can't smoke that pot and say, oh, I need it because it calms me down. Oh, no, 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 no. You keep your mind on the Lord. He has given you a sound mind and he, and he has given you a spirit of power. You've got power. And the Holy Ghost will come. It's due to power. Don't let sin have do uh, dominate you. He says, present your body, a living sacrifice. Your body is important to God. And you've got to present yourself as a sacrifice to God. And I know it's hard being saved a long time. I've been saved for a couple of decades, baby. I know it's not easy. But if you habitually, if you're living with that man, if you're living with that woman, mm-mm, You've got to get out of that. It's not of God. No matter what that lying prophet said to you, it's not of God. So Jesus, when he was speaking in the book of Matthew, he says he gives drastic measures. It's better that, you know, you lose a limb. So it's better that you don't sleep with that man or that woman. You suffer. You know, your body wants to sleep with them. And so when you don't, you feel like, oh, like you're going to die. You're not going to die. Mm -mm. <clears throat> because you want to go to heaven. And so Jesus talks about the drastic measure. Paul said it a little nicer. He says, mortify the deeds of your body. In other words, put it to death. He says it's in a gentle way, but it's the same thing. He says, put to death these things in your body. Adultery, fornication, lying, covetousness, idolatry. So either way, whether Jesus says pluck it out and pluck it out or chop it off, Paul says put these things to death in you. You got to mortify your flesh, tell your flesh no. And you can because you've got the power. He has given you the power. Do not follow these people who walk in darkness because how can you say you know God? In the book of John, 1 John 1 and 2, he says, how can you say you know God and you walk in witchcraft? How can you say you know God and you're living in whoredom? All these kinds. You say you know God and you do all kind of chicanery. In the body of Christ while saying, oh, I'm a child of God. You're not a child of God. If you're do practicing chicanery, if you're whoredom, you're living in whoredom and you're stealing and lying, you're not. You've got to repent. He says, you can't live in darkness and say, I'm a child of the light. Mm -mm. He said, you make God to be a liar and God is not a liar. Proverbs says, God hates a false witness, one who, and one who sows discord. He hates a false witness and one who sows discord. Let's look at the false witness for a second. And let's see, um, let me go back to uh, the New Testament again. And you have to forgive me. Oh, it's been a long day today. And um, I got some bad news first thing on my way to church today. So you pray for me, people, pray for me. In Mark chapter, we're talking about a false witness. And so in Mark chapter 10, 
uh let's see verse <laughs> verse 19 it says thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal honor your mother and your father and he says yes then jesus beholding him um said one thing you lack and he says go your way and sell your sell your goods i'm sorry thou knowest the commandments of matthew 10 hold on i'm in the wrong chapter And he said, um, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And he said, okay, so he was talking to this man who, this rich ruler who wanted to serve God, but he has all these excuses. Mm. You know how people want to serve God? Well, let me, you know, I have to do some things. I have to live a life before I come to church. Mm -mm. So he's talking to this rich ruler and he says, what must I do to be saved? And he's talking to Jesus all lovely because he's rich and he thinks his money was going to buy him a ticket into heaven. Not so. And so Jesus says, well, you know, you know what the commandment says. You obey your parents, honor them and do not commit adultery and don't do all these things. And he looked at Jesus and he said, yeah, I've done those things. You see that? I want you to hear the word of the Lord. He says to Jesus, oh, I don't commit adultery. I don't commit fornication and I honor my parents. You think that if you go through the ritualistic walk with God, you're going to make it into heaven. It's about what's in your heart. This man followed the commandments, but his heart was not right. And so Jesus said to him, <laughs> Jesus says, all right, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, give it to the poor and you will have the treasures in heaven. And come and take up your cross and follow me. What happened? The Bible said this man became very sad. And he went away grieved in his heart. Because he had a lot of possession. So you see in his heart he was being shady with Jesus. He knows he, he wasn't going to sell his riches. He knew in his heart he wasn't right because he was just going through the motion. And a lot of Christians, they tend to go through the motions. They don't serve God with their whole heart. Jesus just said, all right, you want to follow me? You want eternal life? Sell your goods and come and give it to the poor. The Bible said he was a very wealthy man. But he walked away. Why? Because he's full of falsehood. He's what we call fake and phony. What do they call them today again? You know those fake people? They do fake things. He was a fake. And it's false. You have people who come on the social media and they come and they try to, you know, pretend that they are one thing when they're not. It's fake. Fake. Because they want to get more what? followers they want all these things so they go on there and they pretend to be something that they're not you're a false witness you're a liar you're you're lying against the truth in um proverbs chapter 14 and i think it's about verse 5 again falsehood falsehood here pretending and in verse 5 it says a faithful witness will not lie a faithful witness will not lie. But a false witness will utter lies. Now, in the previous verse, it says that God hates lying a lying tongue. And we talked about a lying tongue at length in the next lesson. And he says here, a false witness. God is not playing. He's not going to take kindly to a false witness. So you don't want to be a false witness where you get on the uh, social media or in your church pretending to be some somebody that you're not or a false witness against someone where you go and you lie on someone or you try to you know sway or influence other people against someone else god hates that and if that is in you you need to quit it stop it today because god is not playing with you and that the next one, he says, one who sows discord. This is a big one because God doesn't play. You don't come into the church and sow discord. God is not pleased. And in James uh, chapter four in James, the book of James, he says, speak not evil one of one, speak not evil of one another. Don't talk evil about each other. He said, he that speaketh evil against his brother, judge his brother. Speak evil and speak evil of the law or speak evil of what God says. He says, but if you judge the law, then you are not a doer of the Lord, but you are a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. 
Who are you that you judge another? Go now, he says. Go now, go now. And he's telling you to go and then practice, you know, holy living. But he says, do not speak evil about each other. God is not pleased. He does not want us to sow discord. He wants harmony. Just like he wants harmony in the body, he wants harmony in <clears throat> the church. Corporately, he wants harmony, you see. And harmony doesn't mean you agree with everything, but it means you're not kicking against it. You're not waging war against it. You understand? There's a difference, you know. You don't have to agree with someone, but you don't go and drum up support and go on a campaign to destroy whatever <clears throat> God is doing. Matthew chapter 5. I tell you, Matthew chapter 5 is loaded. You got to go back, people, and study that, you see. There's lots in there. So Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of the living God. So do not sow discord amongst each other. There are many scriptures that rebukes us when we cause, when we are divisive, when we call, cause division in the church. You cannot be born again and cause division. If there is an argument, fix it. Say what you got to say. Say what you got to say. Nobody's silencing you. You can speak your mind, but be willing to hear the other side. When you hear the other side, you might not agree. Then you just say, you know what? God bless you. You still love them. You don't have to agree. We're not all going to agree, but we agree on one thing, Jesus Christ. And that's the foundation we stand on. So again, be careful that you're not antagonistic, that you're not arrogant, that you're not, you don't think you're right, you're right, you're right. You see, when you find a person who think they're right, and no matter what somebody says to try to help them, no matter if you can't help them, they don't want your help. You got to say, God, I try to help. They don't want my help. And you leave them to God. You don't malice them. You don't be angry with them. You might have to avoid them. Yeah, but you don't in your heart have harbor evil thoughts about them. You say, God, I tried. Some people don't want your help. They rather just let it be all about them. One man show, one woman show. But you pray for them. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that you have to say yes to everything and agree to everything. But then you pray. You go back to God and you pray. So don't sow discord and don't be a false witness. Don't be a fake. It takes too much work to be a fake, you know. When you see these people being a fake and they're discovered, you say, you went through all that for nothing. So listen to me. God hates these things. Go back. I'm not saying God hates you. You got to come to that conclusion by the word. He says, these things that come out of you defile you, defiles you. And Isaiah said, your iniquity separates you from God. He not listening. Mm, la, 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 la. God is not listening. That's a big thing. So you don't want your iniquity, your willful sin. Iniquity is willful, premeditated sin. You know, sometimes when I talk to my not so safe friends and they would cheer stuff with me, you crack up, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I just put on something sexy and I go over to my boyfriend's house and la, 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 la. But that's willful sin. You thought about it. You got in the shower, you got dressed, you put your lingerie on, you comb your hair. That's willful sin, sweetheart. You sit down and you know you got to tell the truth. Tomorrow at your job and you sit down and you concoct the lie in your head. You rehearse the lies and you go to your job and you lie. And then you lie on somebody. You lie on your coworker. God sees these things and God hates it. My friend, God hates it. Don't let these things come out of you. Remember the scripture I gave you in 2 Corinthians Casting down every vain imagination, every futile argument, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You've got to cast it down, bring it into captivity under the obedience of Christ. In other words, whatever is not like Christ, get it out of your mind. Don't receive it. Don't harbor it. Don't let it rent space in your head. Dispel that thought and then begin to replace it with the word of God. If it tells you to hate your brother, hate your sister, you have to get rid of that thought by saying God says to love them. God said bless my enemy. Bless those who curse me. Pray for those who despitefully use me and persecute persecute me or persecute you. So you go back to the word 
and you bring that thought into captivity. So you, you, it, he's, it, you know, the thought come, your boyfriend calls you, your girlfriend calls you, you want to come over and you got to go and say, oh, my body is the temple of the, the living God. I can't join it to a harlot. I cannot. How can two walk together unless they agree? Oh, no, no, no. You see, you bring that thought and you capture it with the word of God. That's what it means. Bring it into the obedience of Christ. Anything that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge, the knowledge of God. Go back to the knowledge of God and say, mm -mm, I can't steal. My God will provide. He will supply all my needs. I'm not going to steal. I will not steal. And God says to esteem my brother more than myself. When you think you're standing, he says, take heed. If you think you're all that, take heed. Because one day you're going to come crashing down. So when, you're, when your brother is overtaken in a fault, restore him. If he repents, restore him. Thinking that maybe one day you will fall and you would want mercy and you would want somebody to restore you. You see how you bring it into captivity? You see, because sometimes when people sin, they come in fornication. Oh, they don't talk. Nobody talks to you. You're like, you know, the scarlet A or whatever. And nobody wants to talk to you and fellowship with you. No, you have to think, oh my God, what if that were me? What if that were me? And maybe I may not commit adultery, but maybe I lie or maybe I do something else. So you show mercy. When the person repents, you show them mercy and you love on them. And you forget about that sin. You love on them because you see, you got to take heed. Pride. Don't let pride get you that you think you're up here. You know, I go to a church and I'm telling you, sometimes I shake my head. People, they, 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 they just, they're so prideful. They can't say hello because they're so deep. Meanwhile, they're half stepping and half living, but they're so deep, they can't say hello. They're so deep, they can't love with a true and pure love of God. You're just fake and phony because everybody want to be up that way. You see, nobody wants to be humble. So bring that thought into captivity and do in Romans 12. Romans 12 is where I read where it says, present your body, a living sacrifice before God, holy and acceptable unto God. It's your reasonable service. It's the least you can do. When you bring your little body to God and you don't fornicate and you beat that flesh down, it's, it's a reasonable service. It's not even the ultimate. It's reasonable. The Bible calls it. And he says, you renew your mind by renewing your mind. You've got to renew your mind. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. You're going to be transformed by renewing your mind on the word so that you can bring those thoughts into captivity in the word of God. Oh, God hates these things, baby. And if these things live in you, we've got a problem because they are defiling you. And if you are practicing your workers, <laughs> David called them the workers of iniquity. That's what David said. These workers of iniquity. And if you're a worker of iniquity, then God will not hear your cry. He will not hear your plea and he will not hear your prayers because your iniquity is a stench before him and he's not going to listen to you. So you want your prayers answered. Pray like David prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew the right spirit in me. Search me, O God, he says. And many times we have to go back to God and say, Lord, search Search me, search me. I do it all the time because sometimes there's some hidden stuff in your heart that you forgot about. Things you got to repent, things that you said, and you got to go back and say, Lord, search me. And when he searches, you repent. And if you have to go back and say, sorry, go back and say, sorry. And if you got to set something right, set it right. Ask him to help you. Don't be prideful. You know, some people can't say, I'm sorry. I don't get that. There are people who won't say they're sorry, but what they do, they turn around and they try to gaslight you. Oh, I talked to her, but she won't talk to me. Meanwhile, they have not uttered the word, I am sorry. I'm sorry, words, I am sorry. It's hard for them to say that. That's pride. That is pride and God hates pride. He hates it. So if you have to say those words, buckle up and say, God, help me. Give me the strength. Let me humble myself before you. Go to that brother. Go to that sister and says, you know what, friend? I'm sorry if I hurt you. Even if you didn't hurt them, maybe they're sensitive. It don't matter because maybe somebody going to pummel you. So be nice to that person so that you don't get pummeled on the other side. You just say, hey, 
I'm sorry. Please forgive me if I hurt you. What did I do? I'm so sorry. And God will honor you. God will bless you. Watch and see. When you obey God, when he sends you to fix something, when he sends you to mend a relationship, when he sends you to, you know, to the altar to repent, you see, God will step in and strengthen you and he'll bless you because that's all he wants to do is to bless you in the right way. My time is up. I hope this lesson inspired you. I hope it pricked your thoughts that you will go back now, listen to the five messages again, go back and study out the scriptures. I have lots and lots of scriptures, but the time people, the time, somebody tells me I got to cut the time. I'm doing my best. So I want you to go back and study it out. God hates you. Question mark. You've got to let your heart be right before God. So ask him, give you a clean heart. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, share this message with someone so that they learn the scriptures. Go with God and continue to be a blessing. Why? Because you are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for watching.